Advances in genetics have come fast and furious in recent years. Let's get into that and cover some of the basics to make sure we're all on the same page. Sequences of DNA make up genes and strands of genes make up chromosomes. And we human beings have 23 chromosomal pairs, uh, a side of which comes from the mother and a side of which comes from the father. 22 of these pairs are known as autosomes, which look the same in both males and females. However, the 23rd pair is known as the sex chromosome, and that's XX for females and XY for males. So the mothers contribute the X part and the fathers contribute the Y part. And that's where these Y chromosomes come in. They're the part of the sex chromosome that is contributed solely by the father, and it's only present in males. And there are some unique things about this Y chromosome. For example, unlike the X chromosome, and I think all other chromosomes, the Y doesn't really undergo recombination. It doesn't really exchange genetic material with other chromosomes, except in some very limited areas that it interacts with the X. So it remains largely intact, even when an egg is fertilized and the XY come together. So this lack of change makes it super useful for tracing paternal lineage and also looking for direct descent from male ancestors. And despite the Y chromosome being such a window into the past, one benefit of studying it is it's relatively simple. You see, the human genome has 20,000 to 25,000 genes. The X chromosome has 800 to 1100, whereas the Y chromosome only has 50 to 200 genes. And that wide variance depends on sort of how you count the things technically. So that makes the Y chromosome much easier to study and gives you a lot more bang for the buck. So in early DNA studies, before we got all this latest technology that has made sequencing so much faster and cheaper, a lot of them focused on the Y chromosome. Here's one focusing on kinship in an early medieval cemetery in Germany, and it conducted Y chromosome analysis to find two distinct lineages in the cemetery. And this is, again, very relevant to what I'm working on now. So yeah, Y chromosomes, still very helpful in understanding archaeogenetics, and through that, getting a better sense of how societies and kinship structures formed.